Mm. Do you think he wants to replace, he wants China to replace the United States as the leading power, the defining power? Oh, yeah, power I think he system? does. I mean, you know, I, I'm, I'm confident he wants to have the largest economy in the world and have a, uh, the largest military capacity in the world. Rewrite the rules of the international order? I think so. Not all of them, but he says, he pointed out to me, he said, we weren't there when those rules were written about international airspace and, and so on. And, uh, but I don't think he wants, he's looking for war, conflict, expansion of territory. And he, look, I, I sometimes say to my colleagues, I've spent over 180 hours talking with my NATO colleagues and European colleagues in person or on Zoom. I, I, I say to them, do you know anybody, any world leader who would trade places with Xi Jinping? Okay, I'll trade. I'll take their problems. You take mine. I don't know anybody who would. Because it's not that he, he's a bad guy or a good guy. The, the, the circumstances are enormously complicated. For example, you know, the, uh, the whole notion of, uh, um, you know, the, this new... Ring road, or it's going to put around. Are you going to invest in other nations? Well, it's ended up producing debt and a noose. <laughs> you know, these countries are in real trouble, uh, and so. But it requires us to be more responsible. The West. I've been pushing very hard to get our European colleagues to invest in infrastructure in Africa, in South America, in to generate the kind of growth that they should have and could have because we're the ones that caused the environmental problems. We clear cut everything. We, and now we're telling them, no, everybody slow up. But I, I guess what I'm saying is I think there are positive answers to the dilemmas that exist without worrying about whether or not China is going to rule the world.